Hi everyone, my name is Jakub and I'm today in Tallinn. Uh, next to me is uh, Bert, he's the Affiliate Marketing Manager for Estate Guru. And today we'll be talking about uh, the risk connected to P2P lending as well as about the current and future plans of the P2P lending platform. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe to start, can you quickly introduce the platform, what are you offering? Sure, uh, first of all, thanks for the interview. And, uh, uh, if I were to sum up the straight crew really quickly, I'd say that we are a pan-European uh, like a property lending platform uh, for short-term loans, and we offer uh, a really great uh, like variety of investment opportunities uh, that are cross-border for our international investor base, mm -hmm. uh, and also we have uh, flexible and uh, fast financing for uh, our borrowers who are uh, real estate developers mostly. And currently there's over uh, 26,000 investors on the platform that are already investing in uh, uh, secured real estate uh, investments that we have. And, uh, and we have already financed more than uh, 130 million. So mm -hmm. it's, it's getting bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a bit more about the uh, average investor? What kind of people invest on SD Guru? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'd say that the average investor is 25 to 35, uh, a male, uh, but uh, we have to keep in mind that we have investors from all different uh, like uh, walks of life. We have banks investing, we have students investing, so it's a bit hard to generalize, but mm -hmm. if I were to, then yeah, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us a bit of a, an idea of who can invest in the platform? Are there any requirements that the investor need to fulfill in order to sign up and invest? Uh, the currently, everyone can invest as long as they have a, a bank account in the European Economic Area mm -hmm. or Switzerland. So that's, that's the first requirement. The second one is to be over 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. Do you also get investors from, let's say, markets like US and the UK? Yes, we do. Uh, and some of them use uh, third-party services like TransferWise, Paysera, uh, and Revolut to, uh, to uh, still get the deposits in. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, you, a lot of the B2P lending platforms, uh, especially in the UK and the US, they charge fees uh, for the investors. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any fees that uh, the investor need to pay? No. no. Uh, currently, our investors have no fees. All the fees that we take are from the borrower side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you disclose a little bit of, of how much uh, um, how much you take from the borrower? Yeah. Uh, from the borrower side, we have a two to three percent success fee, mm -hmm. uh, and also an administration fee, which is annual and which is like zero to two percent. All the fees that we have are openly up on the platform, uh, so everyone uh, is welcome to check them out. When investing money, you should be always aware of the risk and securities. This is the case also with P two P lending. I'm here today with Eric from Estate Guru. He is the debt manager, right? And uh, he is uh, the person uh, who is doing the due diligence, correct? Uh, my role comes relevant in the case when things go bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am usually uh, also used in order to get the information uh, of the background of the borrower mm -hmm. before we hand out the loan. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit of the, of the process? What kind of information are you getting? What are you looking at? Well, first of all, what we get from the borrower is the financial uh, status, the reports of the health of the company, mm -hmm. uh, also uh, information about the project. Uh, we get the information about the collateral, uh, what is currently there. Uh, that means that the borrower hands us also the evaluation of the collateral asset. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, we are using the same uh, valuators as the banks. So I think in that sense, we are at the same level with the banks, mm -hmm. uh, using similar risk models uh, before uh, stepping into the project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in case the bank does not finance the project and the developer goes to a state guru and uh, he gets approved 
Um, why, why, why is, what are the reasons behind, behind it? Why does he get, not get approved by the bank? Why does he come to a state guru? Well, there can be different reasons behind that. Uh, one, for example, uh, is that the developer wants to do a very short project. Uh, and uh, short project meaning, uh, let's say on average, six months is not appealing for the bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't earn enough uh, money from the interest, but it could be appealing for a state guru. Mm -hmm. So that could be one of the reasons why uh, we step into a project like that. Or if uh, it's a mixture of persons behind the project uh, uh, stepping into a new corporation under a new company, we have the possibility to do the background check. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look, we take usually a wider look into the background of the person. Mm -hmm. And if we don't see any red flags in there, if we know that the person is experienced, then we do give the approval for such projects. Mm -hmm. uh, for an investor, uh, when the people are investing on your platform, what are the securities for them to get their money back in case the borrower decides not to continue paying or it's, uh, he gets out of cash? Well, uh, in uh, all of our projects, we have the real estate backing. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, it could be that the uh, borrower, the connected person, uh, either a, a board member, um, has given a personal guarantee to the project. Mm -hmm. So we don't uh, take on personal guarantees from persons who have nothing behind them. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that sense, we do take steps in order to uh, make sure that if things don't go the way they were planned, mm -hmm. then the investors' uh, investments are secured. Okay, that's a good point that you mentioned this because I invest myself and uh, currently I have uh, two loans, two projects that are late with their payments. Yeah. I think both are late by uh, uh, one month. It's the bridge, one, uh, bridge loan first stage Latvia as well as um, and the Superlus uh, bridge loan. Yes. Can you tell us more about the steps behind it? What are you doing in order to get the payments back to the investors? Yeah. So uh, when a loan becomes late, we have uh, two workflows working at the same time. We have automated workflow, meaning uh, we have system sending reminders mm -hmm. to the borrower. Um, we just updated our system yesterday, meaning that uh, we are now implementing uh, European uh, Council regulation, meaning that we are sending out uh, paid reminders, mm -hmm. meaning that this will bring more cost to the borrower if they are late. And uh, on the same time, we have manual workflow, meaning we have pe uh, persons making the calls, reaching out, sending emails, and trying to first understand what has happened, mm -hmm. why is the payment late, mm -hmm when we will get it and then work out the solution, how to get the money flowing again as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't happen, then we proceed according to our uh, process and bring in the additional uh, force in the uh, person of a bailiff, for example, mm -hmm. because we do have uh, uh, agreed in the loan agreements that we have an option to go directly to the bailiff. That may vary depending on the country's legislation. Mm -hmm. For example, in Estonia, we simply can forward the claim to bailiff when it becomes uh, late and we have terminated the agreement. But uh, in Latvia, we have an obligation first to go to court and ask the permission from the court mm -hmm. to sell the collateral asset. Mm -hmm. And that adds slightly time to the overall process. Mm -hmm. So uh, the time 
frame varies depending on where the project is built on in what very location, much. right? Very much. That's, uh, uh, that's good because my next question would be, uh, you're expanding in different countries, right? You want yes. to expand in whole Europe. And uh, how do you deal with the different legislations in terms of debt collection? Let's say, for instance, in Spain, or uh, if, you, if you expand to UK, what would be the challenges there? You think that you can collect the debt as easy as here in Estonia, or is it going to be harder? Um, again, uh, very much uh, the collection of any debt, uh, it, you have to take a uh, case-by-case case approach. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have cases in Estonia that have uh, taken us a long time to collect. Um, and we have had cases in other countries that have been solved very fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can tell you now is that uh, fortunately uh, all the countries where we are looking into uh, expanding now, mm -hmm. they are part of the European Union mm -hmm. and that uh, unifies the legislation and uh, gives us uh, common ground to start from. There are differences of course but they are not big, mainly minor administrative differences. So that gives us uh, insurance that uh, we can expand mm -hmm. and there are no big surprises for us. Mm -hmm. But of course, in every country, we first uh, look into the uh, bad case scenario. We want to understand in, in the first hand, if things go bad, can we get the money back and how? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's our first approach when uh, looking into new country. That's mm -hmm. also connected with the LTV, right? With the loan to value. Yes, of course. Uh, the LTV uh, shows the ratio, how much money we have given out to the borrower mm -hmm. compared to the value of the collateral asset or what it has been valued at. Mm -hmm. And uh, on majority of our uh, projects, the LTV is around 65%. It can be a lot lower or it can be slightly higher. But as with banks as well, uh, the LTV uh, doesn't go very much higher than that. For example, in our cases, LTV over 75% should be out of the question because uh, the risk level goes too high even for us in that case. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think will happen during a recession? You think that uh, you can still uh, bring the money back in case the borrower cannot repay and the value of the, of the real estate drops? Well, as you remember uh, a decade ago mm -hmm. when uh, real estate prices uh, collapsed, then uh, the investors who exited the market uh, fast, they suffered quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And in the Baltics, the value of the real estate uh, dropped very much. The Baltic real estate market uh, compared to other markets in the Europe uh, is relatively small, mm -hmm. uh, meaning uh, it reacts fast. Uh, and the vola volatility is quite high. On the positive side, it regained its uh, levels quite fast and brought uh, quite a nice income for long-term investors. Mm -hmm. So in the case, if we should see a recession now and the prices uh, drop, then first of all, uh, we have some buffer in each and every project to take care of uh, uh, some kind of a recession mm -hmm. to a certain extent. But if, uh, if the project is big and the uh, uh, buffer is uh, used, then we need to take a uh, deeper look. Do we have a personal guarantee, for example, or uh, maybe it's even wiser to wait slightly mm -hmm. and wait for the price level to come up to the earlier level. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, in the Baltics at least, the uh, levels came up 
quite fast after after the stroke. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens with the loans that are um, that have the status as defaulted loans on the on the platform? Um, how long does it take to in average to collect the money back? And uh, did it ever happen that you could not collect anything and the investors lost their money? Um, I'll start answering the question from the end first. Uh, no, we haven't lost a single cent of in investors' uh, investment so far. And I hope very much that it stays the same way for a long time. Um, what happens uh, to a case that has been put into the default uh, status is that whenever the case exits our office, goes to a bailiff, for example, that means that we change the status into a default status. Until then, it's in the late status. So for an investor, it should be the sign that, okay, a state guru has forwarded it to state authority for collection. That's kind of the first step. And then depending on the country, uh, the bailiff starts collecting it. Firstly, giving uh, the borrower a voluntary period to pay. In the countries where we operate so far, it has been, and it is, 30 days to pay the whole claim uh, voluntarily. If that uh, time passes, the bailiff starts selling the collateral assets and the bailiff will organize as many auctions as needed. And after every auction, the price level, if the auction fails, then the price level is revised and the new auction is announced. Um, we have had cases, defaulted cases, where we have uh, managed to collect the full debt uh, right, I would say it was under one month after we uh, placed the case into default status because the borrowers who operate uh, in the real estate uh, market, uh, they do understand very well what it means for a bailiff to step in mm -hmm. and uh, their first step is of course the first idea is to avoid it and if they can't avoid it they want to clear the case before um, the bailiff starts using rough methods with them meaning taking over the asset mm -hmm. uh, ownership and uh, for example we had a recent case Givila mansion where we returned uh, over half a million euros to the investors. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was a nice win and I am. And I can tell that uh, our investors will get good news also in the upcoming weeks. Perfect. Um, if you could give an, uh, give an advice to the investors on how they can minimize their risks, what would you, what would you say? Well, first of all, uh, the first step would be for the investors to do their own due diligence because we give them uh, all the information that we receive. Um, Estonia, especially when we're talking about Estonian projects, then in Estonia the information is widely available in all the registries and it's online. Mm -hmm. And in most cases you don't need to spend either no money at all or you need to spend very little amount of money to get the information. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest to go out and investigate. Uh, in the other countries we try to obtain as much uh, information as possible and bring it to the investors so that they could make their own uh, judgments and decisions. So. Uh, Otherwise, um, yeah. Okay, you need to cut that. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Talk about the uh, uh, future plans of Estate Guru. Uh, do you plan to expand on the features that you're currently offering? Of course, uh, we have like a lot of new features uh, already planned that are already in development. The first one would be the secondary market. Uh, we are planning to launch that at the end of the summer. 
And after that, we are also working on a big project which would uh, automate, uh, automatize all our risk analysis part. Uh, so that's, that's another big project that we're currently undertaking. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, you made adjustments to the settings of uh, AutoInvest, if I remember correctly, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you plan to decrease the minimum investment and expand on the functionalities of AutoInvest, or you you stay like like it is right now? No, I, I mean with AutoInvest, we are uh, open for uh, any suggestions that uh, that investors have, and uh, and we are gradually developing it all the time, uh, so investors can expect like periodic periodical improvements uh, and then regarding the minimum amount uh, currently it's set like that but uh, but we are uh, looking to uh, looking to like see if if we can lower it in the future mm -hmm. perfect um, you are currently uh, the platform is translated into six languages right mm -hmm. and do you plan to translate it in other languages as well to make it available to investors from let's say central and eastern europe yeah, uh, it's six languages now. The latest edition was the Russian language. And uh, after that, we're planning to open the platform for uh, Spanish language and for Finnish language. These are the, probably the next two. But uh, of course, we won't stop there. Uh, we will definitely have more languages available. Right. That's uh, maybe a good indication that you're expanding and offering your platform also to other investors, mm -hmm. not just uh, in the Baltic yeah. countries, right? Sure. Perfect. Uh, maybe to conclude, uh, can you give uh, an idea why people should consider investing on uh, Estate Guru? Well, to put it simple, uh, I'd say that uh, Estate Guru is the uh, leading European platform that uh, offers these uh, right, property-backed investment opportunities uh, with a good yield. Uh, so. The key here is this secured word that we have all the projects secured with a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So this is also the difference to other platforms, right? Yes, that's a true. lot of platforms uh, offer investments into unsecured loans. Mm -hmm. So the differentiation here is that you offer um, investment opportunities in uh, secured loans. Yes, we, uh, we only, only do secured loans. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you want to read more information about Estate Guru, feel free to visit uh, um, my link in the description below where I review the platform. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Yeah, thank you.